Praise the Lord, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. It's so good for to, uh, for us to be here together. This is Pastor Ruth Ann. Welcome to another Wednesday night prayer service. We are expecting such a mighty move of God, so I am excited to have you with us. I pray that you all had wonderful Thanksgivings and that you've been off to a great week and that you're excited and have great expectation to hear from the Lord tonight. I'd love for you to take a moment right now and just share this broadcast. Just click share, get, click like, and let somebody know that you should. they should join. They really should. They should join tonight. Uh, we're going to have a good time in the presence of the Lord. So I'm going to open up an order of prayer. We're going to do some stuff, have some fun, hear a great word from a special guest tonight, and I think you're going to be blessed. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you. Thank you for your goodness to us, for your loving kindness, for your tender mercy. God, thank you for never letting go of us. Thank you, Lord God, for never forgetting about us. Thank you, Lord God, for never overlooking us. Thank you, Lord God, that we are always your priority. And we thank you, Lord God, that you are inclining your ear to our cry even now. I pray, God, that you would hover over every home that's represented on this live tonight, Lord God, that you would rest and your presence would be felt, Lord God, whether they're watching in their home, in their car, Lord God, if they're listening with friends, Lord Jesus, on their phones, on their televisions, wherever they are, God, may they feel your presence in the room. And we thank you, Lord God, and we wait with great expectation to hear what you will say to us as we gather tonight. We love you, God, and we thank you for being God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So we're going to play a game tonight. Haven't done a game in a while. And this game is going to be a word scramble. We're going to put a word on the screen. The first person who can guess what the word is will put your, your, your name up and uh, you'll get a prize. You promise. So first word, we're going to put it up. And then what you'll do is in the chat, in the comment section, you're going to say what that word is. The first person, and we've got judges who are watching all of our platforms, the first person to actually put the correct word, and you got to spell it correctly, in the chat, you'll be the one to get the prize. Okay, so I'm going to put the first one up. This is an easy one. Here we go. 
I should have played some Jeopardy music, right? We're going to give you five, four, three, two, boom. There you go. Rosie M. Perfect. The correct answer, allow. That was really good. All right, let's see who can do the second one. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Nobody got that one. Okay. The correct answer was failure. Okay. This is a hard one. I might give you 10 seconds on this one. Here we go. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four, come on, y'all. Three, oh, she got it again. <laughs> okay, Rosie M, there we go. Position. Okay, here we go. This one is easy. Here we go. Five, four, three, two. Come on, Bible study people. One, nobody? And the correct answer is kingdom. Oh, I see kingdom. Wait, I'm seeing it now. Oh, hey judges, we gotta move faster. <laughs> Here we go. All right, so we'll give you kingdom. All right, that was so funny. I feel like we should take Rosie M out of the running for this next one. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We love everybody. Please, please don't, 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 don't shoot me. Okay. Uh, hold on a second. Got to get the last one up. Okay, here we go. Five. Oh, sorry. I'm taking that down real quick. I saw a mistake. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Did anybody get it? <laughs> Didn't I just say we were going to take Rosie M out of this game? That's correct purposes. And so our sentence for tonight, I wonder if anybody could put this all together. What was our message for tonight? Allow failure to position you for kingdom purposes. Allow failure to position you for kingdom purposes. For the month of December, we are going to go into a deep dive on a sermon Bishop preached right after the election. And that sermon was, what's the next? And I don't know if you remember that sermon, but if you listen, and if you don't remember, you can go back. It's, it's still on our channels. It's on Facebook. It's on YouTube. You should listen to that sermon. But he challenged us greatly to really position ourselves to assume the position that God would have us to be for his kingdom purposes. He started, and I want you to turn in your Bibles tonight with me to Isaiah chapter six, beginning at verse one. Isaiah chapter six, beginning at verse one and reading through verse, uh, actually reading through verse four. Isaiah chapter six, beginning at verse one and reading through verse four. The Bible says this, in the year that King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. 
Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain, he covered his face. With twain, he covered his feet. And with twain, he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. And the house was filled with smoke. And then on the Sunday that Bishop preached this message, he skipped down to verse eight. And he said, also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. I think we could all agree that 2020 has been a very difficult year. 2020 has been a year where many of us wondered, will we make it? Did we want to make it? We used our energy to struggle through blow after blow, headache after headache, unexpected twists and turns. Sometimes we rose to the occasion. Sometimes, frankly, we didn't. We'd never seen life like this before. We had never experienced life like this before. Nothing could have prepared us for what was to become our new normal. Children suddenly had to come home and go to school from their living rooms. We had to work from home, not just for a day, but for weeks and months. And some of us are still working from home. We couldn't fly. We couldn't drive. For a while, we couldn't go to the supermarket. And for many of us, if we're honest with ourselves, we began to focus our energies on simply surviving from day to day. And survival became the order of the day. Survival became our number one priority. And then it kept going and kept going and kept going until survival became the norm. And in that message, Bishop gave us three key points that we are going to go and study over the next three weeks because God just doesn't want us to survive. God's kingdom is not just about surviving the current crisis. God's kingdom and what God is demanding and what God is requiring is for a kingdom people who will stand up in the face of everything that's going on, stand up in the face of the times that we are facing, stand up and allow ourselves to not only be positioned, but be propelled for kingdom purposes. Now, I know it's hard. And I know you kind of want to say to yourself, are you kidding me? I'm lucky to just get up out of bed every day. I'm, I'm happy if I can just make it from bed to church or from bed to work. But God says, there is so much more I have in store. And so tonight we want to start our series in dealing with the topic of failure. And so I'm going to throw a question out there and I'm inviting you to throw your answers in the chat as we prepare for our speaker. How do we look at failure? How do we look at failure? If you say, I see failure as a barrier to success, put a barrier, just write barrier in the chat. If you say, I see failure as the springboard for success, I want you to put the word springboard in the chat. If you see it as a barrier, put the word barrier. If you see it as a springboard, be honest, put the word springboard in the chat. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to go ahead and answer that. Some of us see it as a springboard. Mm, no one else is answering. Oh, I'm gonna give you a second. You're gonna catch up. God is demanding from us a response. God is demanding from us an opportunity that must be seized. There's a saying I learned during this pandemic and I love it. And it says the opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity. And so whatever you're facing today, I want you to know, we want you to know that it is time to prepare for what's next. It's time for us to seek the face of God. It's time for us to open up our ears, open up our hearts to hear what God has in store for us. 
It's going to start with some hard work. Pastor Connie, Apostle Brooks was with us last week and she talked about praying and she talked about fasting and she talked about preparing for life after this pandemic. I'm not going to ask how many of you fasted. I know last week was Thanksgiving, but that's truly a challenge from the Lord for us. It is time for us to dig in deep and seek God's face and ask the Lord to talk to us about what he has in store for us. It's time for us to speak up in situations where somebody can't speak up for themselves. It's time for us to take a stand for righteousness in a world that has become so accustomed to evil, right is wrong and wrong is right. It's time for us to spread out our wings of faith again and believe God again, even when everything around you gives an indicator that maybe we are banking on the wrong thing. Sometimes that's what failure does to us. Sometimes failure checks our faith. And I want you tonight to make a plan to allow your faith to check failure. Things that God has let you see, things that we've seen and, and encountered, maybe things that we wish we'd done better, start looking at it through the eyes of faith. Start looking through it, through our understanding. In that message, Bishop said to us that failure in his definition was there has to be a shake up to shape up. There has to be a shake up to shape up. We're gonna spend some time tonight talking about with our guests, how we manage the shakeup. Now, because I don't know how this service is going to end, I wanna also take this opportunity right now before we go any further to challenge you to come back next week. Because next week we're gonna talk about focus. Focus is very, very important. And Dr. Pam Ross will be back with us talking about focus and how we make the most of this moment to push back all of the distractions that would care to present themselves in our lives and position ourselves to focus in on what God will have for us. So tonight we're dealing with failure, facing our failures. Next week, we're gonna deal with focus. And the third week by God's grace, should he spare our life, we're gonna deal with favor because I believe this is going to be the biggest moment for us to experience the favor of God. You cannot allow yourself to be held hostage by your failures. You cannot allow yourself to be held hostage by what happened. You cannot allow yourself to define the, the word of God over your life and the prophetic destiny over your life by what happened. Anybody who's determined to live life by looking through the rear view mirror is not gonna ever see progress. So I wanna challenge you, dig in, and let's begin to now move through the shakeup and Bishop, you really should go back and watch that message. It was November 8th. Yeah, we had to go through the shakeup. Some of us had to face our pride. Some of us had to face our arrogance. Some of us had to face some decisions that we should have made that we didn't make. But you got to go through it. You got to face it. You got to conquer it and allow it to propel you. As we said at the beginning, allow failure to position you for kingdom purposes, for what it is that God would have you to do. And then next week, we're going to dig deeper. We have got to focus our attention. And I want you to be strategic and I want you to be intentional about every distraction that's coming your way. Sometimes it's the news. Sometimes it's your friends. Sometimes it's your family. Sometimes it's your loved ones. But if it's a distraction and it's threatening what's next for you, it's time for us to deal with it. We have today is the 2nd of December. So we've got less than 30 days left in this year. And I wanna say a lot of people I'm hearing them say, God can still bless you and God can still work a miracle and God can still perform his word as if God is late. No, God's not late. No, God is not delayed. There's nothing about a still. God's plan and God's purpose for your life is still on point. God was never confused. This didn't catch God by surprise at all. And so I want you to make a plan that over the next, between now and the end of the year, you're going to dig in and see how you are to position yourself for what God has next. Our special guest tonight 
who is going to challenge us from the word of God. And when I say challenge, he's going to challenge you from the word of God. I apologize up front if he offends you. I apologize up front if he steps on your toes. He's got Holy Ghost combat boots in his arsenal. He is a dear friend and a brother. This is Pastor John Paul McGee, who's the senior pastor of Hope Fellowship Church in Daytona Beach, Florida. He is a preaching machine, has been preaching since he entered the ministry at the age of 12. But in addition to preaching God's word, and in addition to assuming various places in ministry responsibility, Pastor John Paul also has become an accomplished musician and music professor. He graduated in 2002 from Baltimore School for the Arts, and he has degrees in piano and opera studies. He has a master's, I'm sorry, he also graduated from uh, Bethune-Cookman College with a Bachelor of Arts in Music with a concentration on piano performance. He then went on to graduate from Liberty University with a Master's of Arts in Religion and a concentration on music ministry. And a 2015 graduate from Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia with a Master of Sacred Music. I mean, this guy's got more degrees and he's not finished because he's currently a doctoral candidate. And I'm excited to welcome my friend and my brother, Pastor John Paul McGee to the um, Gospel Assembly. Pastor John Paul, how are you? I am doing well, Pastor Ruth Ann. How are you doing? It is good to see you, sir. And it is good to have you with us. I'm so glad to be here. You're one of my favorite people and I love the Bethel Gospel Assembly. And I'm so blessed to be here tonight. Honor to your bishop and to everyone in their uh, respective places. And you know, you, my sister, I never say no to Pastor Ruth Ann. He does not. He does not <laughs> say no. To, and we have that agreement. We have that agreement. When I call, I he doesn't say no. And when he calls, and he's been with us already through the pandemic, earlier in the pandemic, if you remember, he played a medley of hymns for us that just wiped us out. And so we're so grateful. Pastor John Paul, we've been talking about this idea of what's the next. Mm -hmm. And I think, as I said, as we were sharing at the beginning, so many of us have been focusing our energies on surviving mm -hmm. that we have not positioned ourselves for what God wants to do. And the times is demanding it of us and the world is demanding it of us. But some of us shared tonight that we see failure as barriers mm -hmm. for success. And we know that God wants to allow us to face those failures and allow it to spring us forward into his purposes for us. And so I'm going to release you, Pastor John Paul. I know the Lord has given you a word for us. I'm a little scared, no. but, <laughs> but I want you to go ahead and just share what God has put on your heart. You know, pa Pastor Ruthann, uh, just, uh, this is an amazing conversation. I believe that we have to have um, as we move um, into 2021. And um, not that there's something magical or mystical that occurs between December 31st, uh, 1159 and January 1st, 12 o'clock. You know, uh, I think that we have just instinctively um, as a people recognized that shift um, for our own mental and emotional space. Um, it's not necessarily a spiritual shift because we're entering into another year, uh, because we need to understand, of course, that God does not operate according to the Gregorian calendar, right? Oh. God operates according to his own timing and to everything there is a time and to every uh, to every purpose there's been giving a time and a season under the sun. And so with that said, um, as we position ourselves, I believe, to move into another phase of life in 2021. Uh, because in 2021, from a very practical standpoint, uh, we will get a vaccine for COVID-19. Life will begin to level out to a space of normalcy, um, so to say. But it is very important that we understand that this space of normalcy will not uh, resemble, I believe, in any way what normal used to be. Okay. Okay. And, and so so as as we move forward, I think that if I were to identify a key failure for the people of God in 2020, it has been the crisis of faith. Right. 
uh, this this crisis of faith, and, and it's very tricky because um, it's a crisis of faith that was spawned by the word we shouted off of for a long time, and that word is new. Right, we've been swinging from the chandeliers and running up and down the aisle. Woo, God's gonna do a new thing and it's gonna spring forth. And now, have you not known it? Have you not seen it? Have you not perceived it? And we've been shouting on new, uh, because for us, new is um, a revitalized, revised version of what we like, okay. as opposed to the true meaning of new, meaning something that we have not perceived have not experienced before that literally that text in Isaiah 43 says springs up. I believe that the crisis of faith has been our primary failure because we came into 2020, many of us um, get guided by this idea of 2020 vision, right? 2020 is going to be the year I see clearly, our year vision, our year clarity. And, you know, we were <laughs> It had banners made and themes and, you know, and by March, we were in new. Oh, okay. Yeah. But by March the 8th, That's right. we were in new. Something for us, right? Not new to God, because we understand that, that there's nothing new to God under the sun and there's nothing new in the earth under the sun. But for us, in our dispensation of time, we have never experienced a space like this before. Mm. And when we entered the space, it was uncomfortable. It was undesirable. And here it is, it was disruptive. But, but, but here's the thing, there can be no new without disruption. And anything that is new, particularly for people of faith, requires us to lean into God in a way that we've never leaned in before, right? It, 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 so, so that we can hear and receive instruction for that which we have never seen, never experienced in, in, in our lifetime. And, and so that brings me to mind, there's several different things swirling around in my head, but I want us to check out Noah for a second, right? Go ahead, go ahead, Pastor John. Right. Let, let's let's check out Noah, Pastor Ruthann. Uh, no, no, no. Come on back. Don't don't take yourself out. I, I want us to check out Noah for for, for a second. Now, God tells Noah, because and I have you on here because I know your biblical style, and you will correct me if I'm wrong. God tells Noah, "All right, you found favor with me." Right. There's a pronouncement of favor. My God. Mm -hmm. After the pronouncement of favor, there there is an expectation that faith would be exercised. Don't miss that, saints. Please. That's good. Please, please. please. There's a pronouncement of favor. Noah, you have been found righteous. You have found favor in my sight. Now, here's what I need you to do to live in that favor. In order for you to live in that favor, you've got to walk in the faith of God that says, you are about to be used to build something for which there is no prior paradigm. Because I'm about to send a season for which there is no prior frame of reference or paradigm. My God. Come on, saints. Let's walk this thing. That's prior right. to Noah. That's right. That's right. The earth had been nourished from the ground up. Come on. There had never been anything known as rain. That's right. God tells Noah, after he tells him you're favored, I'm sending rain and I need you to build an ark. He says, listen, I'm sending something you've never seen. Yeah. And I'm going to cause you to build something that you have no frame of reference for. But here's what I'm going to do to help you. I'm going to give you the specific and explicit instructions every step of the way. If you just lean in. Okay. If you lean in. Yeah then you will sail through what everybody else is going to drown in. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Like me. That's it, yeah. You, you'll sail through. Come on. You'll float on or float, you'll float through, yeah. right, what other people are going to drown in. Come on, Pastor. Because faith is what causes you to float. Yeah. 
in difficult seasons. He said, because the rain is coming and, and you've never seen nothing like this. It's going to rain for 40 days and 40 nights, but you've got favor to build something that's going to help you float through the season. And I'm going to use you as a part of the recreation nah. of society. I am going to use you as a part of the evolution of the world. It's going to be through you that the world will evolve and come into being because everybody else except these two by twos and these seven by sevens and your children and they see everybody else gone. Gone, gone. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and what Noah did, which many of us are struggling to do, is say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I, I don't know what rain is. <laughs> I've never seen rain before. It doesn't sound like it's something I'm going to like. You're going to, uh-oh, I'm, I'm coming for somebody. Watch this. You're going to shut me in a room with wild animals and my family for a determined amount of time. And there's nothing I can do to escape this quarantine. <laughs> it's gonna be stinky. It's gonna be smelly. People got, I, people got attitudes, but, 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 but if I'm in the boat, I'm safe. Jesus, Jesus. If, if I'm in the ark, I'm all right. Yeah, yeah. But I've got to be willing, watch this, to build what will sustain me. I've got to be willing to live in it until the season shifts. See, part of the crisis of faith is that we want to control the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have been so used to, Pastor Ruthann, determining how we are going to navigate seasons. And so what God allowed to happen is a season that we can't control. Right. So, so all right, y'all, you, you want to try to control this season? All right, open up. Let's see what happens. Okay. <laughs> right. Shut right back down. Right. 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 And, and so one of the things is I was praying through this, Pastor Ruth Ann, and, and part of this, and, and, and I know that as persons in ministry, part of the reason I had you stay on is because there's a part of this that I need to speak directly into you. And, and part of this is, is God is saying that when we don't face what we perceive as our failure, the crisis of faith, then we miss grace. That's right. That's right. We, don't. we miss grace. What is grace? Grace is God's sustaining power, not just God's unmerited favor, but God. grace is God's sustaining strength and power yeah. in seasons of struggle, in, 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 in not even just seasons of struggle, and even in seasons of success. That's right. Grace is God's sustaining power. And, and Paul said, listen, he said, it wasn't until I faced the reality of who I was that I was able to come into a revelation of the sufficiency of God's grace. Say that again. Do that one more time. It was not until I faced who I was, the good, the bad, and the ugly, That's right. that I came into a revelation of the sufficiency yeah. of the grace of God. That's it. So saints, th th I, I, you know, th this year, it's it, it's been a cr it's been about the crisis of faith. And so as I began to think about the crisis of faith that manifests itself in seasons of new, I began to think even about Jesus's relationship with Peter. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus uh, tells Peter, he says, all right, I'm, I'm about to I'm about to be crucified. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm about to die. And Malchus, the mm -hmm. high priest, comes and Peter cuts off his ear. Right. And Jesus looks at Peter and says, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Right. <laughs> right. He said, what because what Peter was trying to do, Peter was trying to avoid yes. the necessary evolution of the ministry of Jesus Christ, which comes through crucifixion. Right. There is no glorification outside of crucifixion. Mm -hmm. You've mm -hmm. got to die in order to live, which is why even for those who are in Northern environments, thank God I'm in a Southern environment, but I was always in a Northern environment, right? Yeah. Uh, the trees have no leaves right now because the leaves have died. Right. But the tree is still living. 
right? The, the, the tree is still living. It's just going through a necessary shedding that comes as a part of its life cycle. Right, right. And so somebody even needs to be encouraged right there. You, you, life ain't over. You just lost some leaves. <laughs> you just lost some leaves. Yeah, yeah. And, and losing never feels good. That's right. But even Jesus said, unless you lose, you cannot gain. That's it. That's it. That's you, it. You, 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 you can't gain. So, so, so we have that incident with, with Peter. Then there's this whole, this, this, this whole Peter's struggle, of course, again, with the evolution of the ministry of Jesus Christ and how it, it affects and impacts him. Mm -hmm. And, and he, he, Jesus tells him, listen, you're going to deny me before the rooster crows three times. He says, but here's what I've done. I've prayed that your faith would not fail. That's right. So that when you come out of this difficult space, that you are strengthened and empowered yeah. for your next, right? So I, I know that this, this ain't what some of y'all want to hear, but this, this is, this is necessary. It is. Yeah. It, this, it, this is, this is necessary. Watch this because creation does not come from order. Creation is birthed out of chaos. That's right. That's right. right. So part of, and I'm just unpacking some of our, our mm -hmm. human thoughts. Mm -hmm. So we like sequence mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we have made sequence and order synonymous and they're not That's right. because something can be out of sequence, but in order. I need you to do that one more time though. I need you to break that down. Okay. Um, we, we have in many cases made sequence and order Simon. Right. synonymous. And they're not. One and the same. And they are not. Um, something can be in sequence, but not in order. That's right. And something cannot be in sequence, but still be in order. Let me give an example. If you look at Genesis chapter one, right? On the first day, what did That's God right. say? God said, let there be light and there was light, mm -hmm. right? Okay, that was day one. So there's light, but there was no apparatus for the light because the sun, which is the greater light to rule the day and the moon, which is the lesser light to rule the night was not created until day four. Come on, pastor. <laughs> That's it, sir. Come on. So, so you, there was no sequence. The sequence does not logically compute with our human intelligence. Because for us, we need the sun to tell us that it's day and we need the moon to signify for us that it's night, right? Because we have made sun and moon equal with light. But no, 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 no. God created light first and then said, all right, let me give you all the tools to be able to separate the different types of light, day okay. and night. Okay. So it was not in sequence, mm -hmm. but it was in order. Mm -hmm. So let me talk, glory to God. Let me talk to the people who, 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 were, who were and are upset that 2020 interrupted the sequence of your life. Good, good, good. It interrupted your trajectory, your path, your plan, yeah. your strategy, right? Particularly the type A's, the, the, the double A's and the triple A's, the ones that plan they work and work they plan. You know, people like Pastor Ruth Ann. <laughs> I'm guilty, I'm guilty. You had to call me out, go ahead. <laughs> Back to your message. And the people like me, yeah, right, who who like it a certain way, eyes dotted, T's crossed, you know, everything in its rightful order, and God sends us into a space that causes us to scramble. Yeah. 
right? Because it's uh, it's it's an out of sequence. Mm -hmm. But I I need you to understand that the life of faith will always defy natural order, mm -hmm. right? The the life of faith. Let me say it one more time. The life of faith will always defy natural sequence, natural order. Yeah. Yeah. And so what God did for us this year is catapult us into a place that we have been saying we were in, but we weren't really in, That's right. which is give me Lord this day, my daily bread. Because mm -hmm. yesterday's food was for yesterday. And today presents new challenges in this liminal space of the unknown. And God, I need you. Literally, every day we are depending and leaning on God. Those of us who are in ministry. Oh, like never before. We, we don't know what we're doing. None of us know what we are doing. That's right. Right? At, while at one point, and let me show you sequence versus order. <laughs> you know, there are people who literally, before the pandemic, had 10 people sitting in their church, right? They went online and now they got 150 views. So at the same, for all of us, we all be, we have all pastors, we have all become yeah. storefront churches, but we become storefront churches with empty sanctuaries, but with the biggest audiences that we've ever had in our lives. Right. That's right, that's right, that's right. So, so, so the sequence, the natural sequence, the natural rhythm, thank you, Holy Ghost, the, 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 the natural rhythm that we had grown accustomed to has been interrupted and disrupted. Because in many cases, we had edited God out of our rhythm and our sequence. That's and it. God is saying, listen, you don't edit me out of me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, so, so, so again, I am not saying that God ordained or that God released COVID-19. That's right. I, I would never argue that. I, I think that's theologically irresponsible for people who would even allude to the fact that God would release this as a plague. I, I just, I, 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 don't, I can't get into unpacking all of that. But what I will say is that anything that is released, even by the principalities and rulers of darkness, has to subject itself to the principle of Romans 8.28. That, right. And we know that in all things. Yes, yes, yes. God is working together for the good of the, see, and a lot of the, the, the versions of scripture really matters because we've been saying all things work together for good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. I do understand that version. It feels good. But when, from an, from an English standpoint, when we read that, it suggests that it's the things that are working. As a right. Things don't work for me because mm -hmm. sure, I've tried things. <laughs> they, they, they fail. Right. But the NIV says it, I believe NIV, NLT, NASB say it a, a little bit more in truth with the Greek construct. And it says, and in all things, God is working. Mm -hmm. God is working together for the good of them. Right. Yeah, yeah. I need somebody write that down in the comment box. Say, God is working for me. God is working for me. <laughs> God, God is working these things for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Because all of us got things. And the things can't work, especially the things we need to work, they can't work without God. So, so in all things, God is working together for good to them that love him and are the call according to his purpose. Yes. My greatest fear, it, my, my greatest fear, Pastor Ruvan, is that we would do what you said in our prayer call, um, mm -hmm. Five or six, uh, probably about five six months ago now, yeah. which is that we would waste this crisis. Yeah. That that's that's my so we some of us have spent so much time kicking against the pricks. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That that we are missing the depth, the width, the height, and the breadth of what this season has to offer us. Yeah. And we risk because of our crisis of faith being behind the eight ball mm -hmm. when we are released back to play. Yes, yes, yes. 
There, there's and, and 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 there are people I know who are not from Bethel who are watching because in, in in the frequency in in the Holy Ghost I'm I'm picking up some things. But I, I need to say this: there there are things we should have already been doing prior to the pandemic. Yes. That we had to hurry up and force ourselves to do. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. As a reaction to crisis. That's right. And we cannot, saints, live in a reactive space because the body of Christ is not called to react. We are called to respond. Come on. Right? We, we are supposed to be in front. And that is part of what God is trying to teach us through this season. But our crisis of faith hinders us from really learning the lesson, which is God's trying. He says, I'm trying to reposition you in, in your right place because you do understand that I cannot come back until the gospel is preached to the four corners of the earth. But we've been so busy trying to get people to come that we forgot that the first word of Jesus's commission to us was to go. That's right. That's right. And so we, we've been living, come here, come to my thing, you know, even when it comes to restaurants and the entertainment industry, you know, come to the theater, come to the move, come to the cinema. And, and now you, you well know, Pastor Ruth Ann, you're, that, that, that's a part of what you do. Yeah. yeah. Now people are trying to retool and figure out, all right. So, so, the, so the question, the, the, the initial question you asked me, which was, how, you know, how do we prepare? What, what do we do for what's next? And I, I, I believe I have a very controversial, but um, theologically solid answer, which is fully embrace now. Because if you don't fully embrace now, you can't hear for what's next. Part of, uh, gosh, that's really strong. Part of the, um, challenge of this 2020 vision year of clarity thing is that for some, not for all, but for some, it placed more emphasis on sight than faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 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 we have we have been conditioned to be people of vision and sight. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that, provided it's God's vision. Notice what God tells Habakkuk, the prophet. Mm -hmm. He says, write the vision I'm going to give you. Yes. Yeah. Right? And make what I'm giving you plain so that those who run with what I gave you That's right. can read it. That's right. Not write what you want. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, yeah, God said, all right, if you want it to be about what you see, let, let me usher something in that I know you ain't seen. All and, and again, I'm prophetic. You know, I walk in the office of a prophet, Pastor Ruth Ann's prophetic, and there are several well-known and lesser known prophets in the several I've talked to and others I haven't. Most are honest and say, out of all the things that God sees me. Show me, I didn't see this. Right, right, right. And so we prepare for what's next by fully embracing what God has introduced. Yeah. And what God has introduced to us is a space which requires utter and complete dependence on God. And I'll say this, and I, um, and I know you're going to weigh in. Um, not only utter and complete dependence on God, but a willingness to reject what was comfortable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. for that which is um, correct. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the stuff we got comfortable doing wasn't correct. Um, yeah. And, and that goes for church, that goes for every industry. And, and now God is saying, all right, 
in order for you to embrace now or next, you got to reject what is comfortable. Because I never called you for comfort. Right? I, I never called you to be comfortable. And so that goes for those who had aspirations in ministry, but your aspirations in ministry were based off of a paradigm of ministry that you had seen before. And now you're in this thing and you say, oh my God, I'm not sure if I really want to do this. Oh, but, but yeah, because it's uncomfortable. Because some of us were looking to sing and preach and, and play to thousands in the audience that applauds us and now we got to do it in front of a screen. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and now it's gotten really real, particularly for those of us who God has called to be on the front lines. It's, 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 it's causing us to check our heart space. Mm -hmm. Why are you in this? And, and for those who aren't on the front line, but you're, you, you would just identify yourself as somebody who comes to church and you've been grieving because you can't make it to the sanctuary. And part of that excessive grief is because you have not embraced the reality that the sanctuary is, is not a place. It's it, it, because of the fact that Jesus broke the veil, tore the veil of the temple. Now we are the sanctuary. So when you look at Psalm 73, when Asaph says, when I made it to the sanctuary, yes, he was identifying it as a place. But now when you say I made it to a sanctuary, you made it in here. When, 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 I, when I made it to this connection. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there, there's been the restoration of a home-based faith this year. If you can't have it at home, then you can't have it in the same, in, in, in the church house. That's right. That's go, right. Pastor Ruth, and I can go on. No, no, no. What were you going to say? I, I, you said so much tonight, Pastor John Paul. You guys are going in in the comments. If you have questions that you want to throw out, because he's flowing, and I'm, I want him to continue to flow. You said um, we have to fully embrace what's now. Mm -hmm. And I want to link that to how you started, which is we also have to fully embrace God's definition of new. Mm -hmm. We we have totally cursed the new thing God did because we didn't like what it looked like. Yeah. And that's a dangerous place for us as believers. We have mm -hmm. to fully embrace now and we have to fully embrace this is the new thing that God was doing. It just doesn't look the way we wanted it to look. It didn't come wrapped the way we wanted it to come wrapped, but it was disruptive and all new things are disruptive. All so new that, things are disruptive. That I want to ask you about how does somebody, I think the reason we struggle with, with that concept, right? I don't want to fully embrace now and I don't want to fully embrace new because mm -hmm. I don't like it. It doesn't make me feel comfortable. It doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't line up with my sequence and my order and all of those things that you've said mm -hmm. tonight. And I think for some people, we will call failure what God never called failure. Wow. We, will, we will mislabel a move of God, an act of God, wow. and, and, and put it in a negative space, crediting the devil. I, I just said to somebody today, I'm going to start defending COVID because some of the stuff wow. we blame it on COVID ain't COVID. You were this way before COVID. This is, this was, don't blame it on the pandemic. This mm -hmm. is what we were. How do we help somebody tonight who is imprisoned now because they have rejected now, they're failing to embrace it. They are rejecting now. They are rejecting new. They are rejecting what God is really up to, calling it failure, saying, I will never, saying, you know, and, 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 and putting ourselves in a place where we can come out of agreement with what God is doing. How do we get that heart change? Somebody put in the comments, a heart change. How do we help someone today who's just plain old stuck? Because you're saying I can get ready for what's next by embracing now and what's new. And I don't, I just can't do it. I don't want to do it. How do we help that person tonight? Well, there, Jesus asked a very, uh, Interesting question. He said, which of you oh, intending to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost? Hmm. My question to those who are stuck is 
what do you think is going to cost you more? To continue down this road of rejection of divine disruption? Or to lean into divine disruption and to see what comes out of that? Um, I'll go back to the Noah example. You got favor, listen and bill, you live. You say, I don't know what rain is. I don't know what the ark is. I don't feel like being bothered with that. Okay, well, you drown with it. People are talking about me. Right, people are talking about me. Mm -hmm. um, I look crazy, I look stupid. Okay, then drown. And <laughs> only you can decide My Lord. whether or not you gonna sink or swim. God doesn't make those types of decisions for us, right? I, I am I am brought back in my remembrance in uh, in the book of Numbers. I believe it's somewhere around the twenty third chapter. There's this encounter with Balaam and a donkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the donkey sees an angel in the middle of the road and takes off running. Balaam starts beating the heck out of the donkey because he doesn't understand why the donkey is not responding to him. Hmm. Balaam is so hell bent on getting to where he wants to go that he's beating that which is responding to God. The donkey responds to God before the human prophet responds. Ouch. Then the donkey comes back on the road, trying to obey its master. The next thing you know, it sees the angel again. Hmm. Now Balaam starts beating it again, but this time the road has narrowed. And Balaam winds up with a broken foot because the donkey has now pressed him up against the wall. All because, again, the donkey is responding to the angel in the middle of the road. Then the donkey starts having a conversation with his owner and says, out of all these years you've been riding me, have I ever not gone where you told me to go? Have I ever been disobedient? Now get this, and donkeys don't even typically run. Mm -hmm. Horses run. That's right. But all of, Balaam is so fixed on what he sees as his future, which is this engagement that God is prohibiting him from with King Balak, that he doesn't even see that the angel of the Lord is in the middle of the road trying to get his attention. And so I preached a sermon from that text called, don't beat the donkey. I used another word, but don't beat the donkey. You know, for those of you who know what the other word is, I, I, that's what I preach. I, I, because many of us are beating the, that which is responding to God. Right. And it's responding to God because we won't. Mm, 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 mm. The, the, the donkey is, right. the donkey sees the angel and takes off running. But the prophet of God, my God, the man of God, my God, doesn't even. He he's so busy beating the donkey that he hasn't even looked up at the road and seen right 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 right. He's not even concentrating on the road, much less the angel. Right, right. So so that's what I say for the person. You can keep beating it. Yeah. You can keep beating it. You gonna wind up with a broke foot. That's right. And bruised emotions. Because no matter what, Jesus, every. That that which is in the world, yes. right, that does not have moral consciousness right. will always respond to God. Yes. Let me give you scripture for that. The earth is the Lord's 
and the, fullness. and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. So the sea will always respond to God. The, the systems of weather, the jet stream will, will always respond to God. Yes, yes. Right? Yes. The animal kingdom will always respond to God. I'll, I'll never forget when I, a couple years ago, when we had, I believe it was a lunar eclipse or a solar eclipse where it gets completely dark. I wanted to see that for mm -hmm. myself. So I went to Tennessee. And one of the amazing things for those few minutes of darkness in the middle of the day, birds started dropping out of the air. Literally, they just fell out of the air because again, it, it got dark that quickly right, right. at an unexpected time. So for, the, for those few moments of darkness, you saw the animals start coming out, right? You start seeing eyes. I'm like, Lord have mercy. What, what, what in the world? Yeah. But, but there was this response. And, 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 and what God is trying to see, I believe, in, in many of us is, can you can you respond? Can you willfully respond in the way that the systems of the earth respond, having no will? Wow. That that is the challenge. The challenge for us is: can we submit? So, for those who are st just stuck, um, that isn't just a mental block. That's a submission problem. Now, and let me say this to that to that person that may be struggling. The Bible says, submit unto God, resist the devil and he will flee. That's in the book of James. Mm -hmm. It says that if I don't have the spirit of submission, then I invite the devil's presence. That's right. Right. And with all of the stuff that God has been doing that has been painful, because God does some painful things, too. Right. So all of the, a lot of the stuff that we've been blaming on the devil this year has actually been a move of God. But it's been painful. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't want <laughs> submitting to God is painful enough. That's right. Right. I, I don't want to err on the side of disobedience to the end that I invite. Yeah. The rulers of darkness to yeah. begin to have their way in and through me. So I pray, yeah, and, and you know, it, it's funny you would say that because th that stubborn yeah. spirit, I'm telling you, there, there's some people in here that have been dealing with a stubborn spirit. That that stubborn spirit, and, and there, are, there are pastors, apostles, bishops, prophets, evangelists, teachers, stubborn, saints, stubborn. And I'm telling you that, um, yeah, it that 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 stubborn spirit will not navigate you towards the favor of God for your life. That's it. That's it. Um, yeah. That's it. I want you to. I want you to pray. Um, you said a lot. You've shared a lot. We've been challenged tonight. Um, there's one other thing that you said that I want to just call out because I do Please. believe God is speaking to us. He said. You said. Um, because we can't see it. You know, we talked about vision mm -hmm. and faith. And for so many, because you couldn't see it, you would not move. Mm. And if you le rely more on your vision and you rely on faith, you will get stuck. Wow. Because there are some things that I really believe, and I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but there's some things that God has spoken into your spirit. You can't see how you're going to do it, but yep. you have to move. You have to realize. And I, I got this saying uh, from a, a pastor that I was listening to, and it's become my new theme. I move at the speed of obedience, wow. not the speed of ambition. I move at the not speed God. of obedience because that's what God, we need to move quickly. We need to move with what mm -hmm. God says. I may not see it, but I have to position myself in agreement with God's word so I can see God's hand. And I want us to just, I want whoever you are, you can't see it. You can't see the provision. You can't see the yes. You can't see the check. You can't see the way. You can't see the full plan. Move on what God said, even if you cannot see it. In order, you can't, you can't lie on some of the stuff we've relied on in the past. Pastor John Paul has already said that tonight. I challenge you tonight. I challenge you. I challenge you to prepare yourself for what's next, 
move at what God has said. I I pray that you all have been challenged tonight. I know I have. I know I have. I wanted to go off screen so I could. I had my tissue because last week <laughs> last week's speaker got me, and I, I you know that I had my tissue ready, uh, but you kept me on camera, so I had to hold it together. But I, mm -hmm. we've been challenged tonight, and I and I keep saying, you know, we are going to end our year strong. God is. We're not behind. God does everything in time. And I believe that if we are ready to respond to what he has said tonight, we will see radical advancement in the will and purposes of God. I believe it. I believe that God is speaking to some of you tonight. God is speaking to many of us tonight that in the next few weeks, as we get ready to close out this year, again, like you said, it's God doesn't move by the Gregorian calendar. Mm -hmm. It's the shifting of a season. Apostle yeah. Brooks said it last week. It's the shifting of a season. The week before we talked about being emotionally healthy so mm. that we walk out this thing that God has said. I have to say this guys, you don't wanna be sick in this season. You don't wanna be bound by shame in this season. It's time for us to see why God kept us alive. So many started this year and aren't ending it, but you're alive. There is something for you to do and you cannot let any thing stop you from walking out what God has in store for you. So Pastor John Paul, I'm going to invite you to pray for us. And I know you will go as the Lord leads you. I don't have to give you that for you, but you've got the green light to go ahead and just minister to us and allow the Lord to speak to you. I, I want to share this um, just to help somebody. Um, about this time last year, yeah, December, I felt so inadequate because typically by October or so, I kind of can sense or see what the theme for 2020 or the theme for the next year is supposed to be, you know? And so I felt really, really, really inadequate because this year was also our church's 25th church anniversary. So I'm like, I can't even, you know, Maybe, is this a sign that my assignment is up? Is this a, what what is going on here? Yeah. And so our church's name is Hope Fellowship. So I said, okay, well, we just gonna say it's the year of hope. I, I, you know, at the time I thought I was being random, right? Then I looked up hope, and the the word hope means expectation that is based on the promise of God. Um, then I said, well, Lord, well, what am I supposed to preach this year? Um, cause typically I plan out my sermon series for the year. And, and so I said, okay, well, I'm just going to preach faith. I'm going to preach through Hebrews 11, the wall of faith. And, um, only to realize that those two words, faith and hope mm -hmm. were going to be what sustained Christian believers yeah. this year. Um, and so I was at that place, you know, and I'm like, well, God, I, I, I can't, you know, I, I can't see it. What, what's going on? Then, then when it came time to shut down the church, I'm like, Lord, I, I, I can't do that. It's going, you know, things are really going well this year. We, we you know, we're tracking well financially, you know, church is full. All right. I'm gonna try to do four and five services with 30 people in the try. And, and God's like, do you trust me? Do do you trust me? Do, do do you trust me to lead you? Do do you trust me to sustain you? Do 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 you trust me? Do, do you trust me to guide you? Do do you trust that the limited portion of what you see is just enough for you to hold my hand so that I can show you the rest of what you've not seen? Because the things which you see are temporal. But the things that you've not seen are eternal. And, and son and daughter, you, you only see through a glass darkly. So yes, what you see is what you see, but it's not 100% of what it is to be seen. Hmm. So can you, can, can you trust me? Yes, God. Can, can you trust me? And so before we go to God in prayer, that's the, the, the question I, I, I placed before us tonight. Can, can you trust him? Some of you have endured great loss this year. I, I empathize um, with persons in New York, particularly with the epicenter of the virus. Several of you have lost loved ones and friends, and so have I. 
It is none of what we have said tonight has been from a space of we both got it or I got it. No, I've just heard it. And faith comes by hearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so now for those of us who hear it, the challenge is, can we walk it out? Can we walk it out with, a, with no sign of the end in sight? Can we walk it out if it gets worse before it gets better? Can we walk, can, 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 we, can we build this ark and live? Or are we going to stay here yeah. and drown? Let's pray. Yeah. Father, we come. We, we come in the holy name of Jesus tonight. We come as your children. We come as your holy beloved. Those who, who you've called by your name, your sons, your daughters, your people. God, we come. We come. We come, many of us, weary and exhausted. We come, many of us, tired, frustrated. We come, many of us, aggravated and angry. Many of us, some of us come grieved, heavy hearted. Many of us come heavy and weighted down. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield for us. Yes, Lord. Woo, you're our glory and you are the lifter of our head. So we come to you tonight. We come to you tonight in full confidence of who you are, that you are the God of the universe. Uh, there's nothing, there is nothing that is too hard for you. There is nothing that is beyond you. you. You are God beside you. There is none other. We take none of your glory. We give it all to you as the creator of all humankind, as the creator of the earth who sits enthroned upon the circles of the earth. We come to you and we come to you in the spirit of worship and praise. Thank you for keeping us. Uh, thank you for sustaining us this year, Lord. In the midst of the loss, we are here. The, the mere fact that we're able to turn on our computers and look on our phones and our tablets to be able to be a part of this prophetic kingdom moment means that you have sustained us and kept us for such a time as this. Thank you. Thank you for keeping us. Lord, there, there are those who are on this line who have contracted COVID and recovered. Thank you. There are others who have been sick from other diseases and uh, situations that you sustained and healed us for such a time that we might be able to hear and experience the power of this moment. And we bless your holy and your righteous name. You alone are worthy to receive glory, majesty, dominion, and power. You are the alpha. You are the omega. You are the many-breasted one. In you, Lord, there is no failure. There is no shadow of turning in you. You have nothing wrong. All you do is good. And we declare that you are the great God who is greatly to be praised. And so tonight we come. Jesus. We come in transparency, but we come in faith. Mm. We want to just say, yes, Lord. We want to say yes, Lord, tonight. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes to your instructions. Yes to this season. Lord, it's uncomfortable. It's been disruptive. Uh, it, it's caused us uh, much dismay. But Lord, we trust that you are the God who holds time and eternity in your hand. And you promised us, according to the book of Ecclesiastes 3, that you would make all things beautiful in its own time. And so we bless you. Yes, God, that you have a plan. You have a plan that exceeds our understanding, for your thoughts are not our thoughts, and your ways are higher than ours. And so, Father, we submit. We repent tonight. We repent for stubbornness. We repent for hard heartedness. We repent, oh God, for being presumptive, feeling like and thinking that we know better than you. You are the God who knows all. You're the omnipotent, omniscient God. And so, Father, for us puffing up in ourselves and exalting our own intelligence and imaginations and thoughts into the space of vainglory, we ask, oh God, tonight for your forgiveness. And so, Father, as we stand before you asking you to create within us clean hearts and to renew within us 
spirits of steadfastness, spirits of rightness. We ask now in the name of Jesus that you would give us a will, Father, to depend on you. Father, even in the midst of our loss, we can say you've never failed us yet. And so, Father, since you are the God who never fails, since you are the God who stands by us, Lord, help us to trust you with all of our heart. Oh God, not to lean unto our own understanding, but oh God, to acknowledge you in all of our ways, knowing Father, that you will lead us. Oh yes, so spirit of truth, spirit of God, lead us into all truth, lead us into understanding. Father, I pray for a release of the spirit of wisdom. Oh God, you said in your word that wisdom is the principal thing, but for us, Lord, in all of our getting to get understanding. Standing. So, Father, help us, help us, help us, help us, oh God, help us to have our ears closely attuned to your lips, Father, that even when you're not speaking in the wind, even when you're not speaking in the earthquake, even, Father, when you're not speaking in the fire, God, make us so sensitive that you speak to us through that still, small voice. Father, help us. Mm. Father, help us, help us, help us, help us, your beloved sons and daughters, oh God. Help us, oh God, to keep our hands on the plow. Oh God, help help your pastors. Oh God, help your apostles, help your bishops. Help the saints of God, oh God. Help us, oh God, to hold on to the plow. Oh God, you said that those who release their hands from the plow are not even fit for the kingdom. Oh, so Father, help us, help us, oh God, give us sticking power. Give us sticking power. Come on, saints, give us sticking and staying power in the name of Jesus that we would not turn to the left, that we would not turn to the right. Oh, God, that we would not go backward or forward except it be at thy word. Father, we submit to you. We submit to you. We submit to you. We ask you that you would have your way. Oh, God, that you would have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way in us and through us. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God. I pray a blessing upon the Bethel Gospel Assembly, its bishop, its, its pastoral staff. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray in Jesus' name for your favor to be upon the entire congregation. For those that are watching from across the country, Father, may we experience your manifested favor by walking in the faith that you have given us. Father, you said when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith in the earth? So, Father, we pray that you would be looking for us. We are the people of faith. Yes, we are the people of God, and we declare that we will walk in the spirit so as not to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Father, we rebuke every principality of darkness. Oh, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come against the enemy. We recognize that he's come to steal, kill, and destroy, but we're taking our minds back tonight. In yeah. the of Jesus. We're taking our hearts back tonight in the name of Jesus and we're placing them in your hands. And you said, hallelujah, that once we are in your hand, no man can take us out. We thank you. Jesus. We thank you. And we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We lavish love upon you, worship upon you, and praise upon you. If we have not done so, if we fail to give you the praise that you have been due today, Lord, we change it right now, and we yes, offer God. to you the praise that you are so worthy and deserving of. Father, there's someone that's watching tonight that's in need, that, that's in need of a job, that's in need of yes. financial provision. Father, touch right now in the name of Jesus to that person that is watching right now that says life is not worth living. They've been contemplating suicide. Father, I bind that spirit of suicide. I bind suicidal ideations now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Nazareth, I declare that you will live and not die and declare the work of God. We declare in the name of Jesus that you will not make a permanent, uh, you will not make a permanent response to a temporary season. Father, in the name of Jesus, blow over your people with a renewed mind tonight. The spirit of grace, we release it by your power in the holy name of Jesus. Uh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. To those who are at the end of their emotional rope, to, to that husband and to that wife uh, who are dealing with issues in the marriage. Father, we come against domestic disputes in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that you would release the spirit of love and the spirit of grace and the spirit of patience in households. Oh God, for struggling students that are dealing with virtual schooling and that are falling behind in their academics, I pray for a spirit of holy intelligence, not just upon the parents, but upon the children. In the 
name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, that equations and problems would become easier to solve. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare that they will end this school year not behind, but ahead in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, yes, Lord, hallelujah. For those who are working on the front lines, the nurses and the doctors, some of whom are even watching right now. Father, those who are bus drivers and those who are working in grocery stores. Father, now in the name of Jesus, I speak a spirit of protection. Oh God, I pray that you would cause our bodies to reject the foreign entrance of any antibody and any germ and any foreign invasion of any a virus or, or flu or pneumonia or cold. Father, you cause our bodies to work in total alignment with your word in the holy name of Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. To that pastor who's watching who feels like ministry is not for them. They've grown tired. Father, the people are not giving. They've not been able to see their congregation and Father, it's playing with their mind. Father, I release a spirit of affirmation right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name, stand in them, stand in them, St hallelujah. Stand up in them, Father. I pray that you would build up pillars of strength in us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Mm. Yes, Lord. 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 We thank you that you are the God who never fails and that you keep your promises to a thousand generations. And Father, we speak as we bring this time of prayer to a close. What you said in Deuteronomy chapter number 28, you said, if we obey you and if we take care to observe all that you've asked us to do, you said all of these blessings shall come upon us. I release the blessings of the Lord unto my brothers and sisters, these sons and daughters of yours. I declare in Jesus' name that you're blessing the fruit of our womb. You're blessing the fruit of our hands. In the name of Jesus, I pray the blessing of Joshua upon your people, that every place the sole of our feet will tread upon. You've given us new territory. In the name of the Lord Jesus, hallelujah. We declare we will feast in the midst of famine. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name for increased revelation, increased knowledge in Jesus' name, new creations, innovation ingenuity by the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus mighty name I pray for a spirit of entrepreneurship yes God in the name of Jesus to fall upon your people yes God because you've given million dollar ideas that hallelujah don't have to be submitted to someone in an office father I pray that you would raise up funders and investors and partners to sow into the vision that you've given your people in the holy name of Jesus yes Lord I thank you I thank you I thank you. And I count all of these blessings done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray you were blessed tonight by Hallelujah. Dear Pastor John Paul McGee. Glory to God. Thank uh, you. I tell you, we have heard from Amen. the Lord. We have sat in his presence. I'm not going to say much because I don't want to cry. And so I just pray that you you guys tonight come back. I see some of you putting in the comments that you want to watch this again. You should watch this again. This was a seed planted in our hearts and in our spirits. And I believe that when planted, if we allow God to do the work, it will bring forth fruit yes. that will remain. That will remain. Blessed. We will see you on Sunday. Uh, it's communion Sunday. So Make sure you bring your emblems when you gather. We'll be in the sanctuary and we look forward to worshiping with you. So God bless you. Have a good day. Bless you all.